Hello and welcome to video number six. Uh, today we will talk about pole placement, which is a classical design technique for designing uh, state feedback gains and uh, observer gains. Today we will look at uh, designing a state feedback controller for a double mass model. So we have that in the demo system library. It's a model of two masses that are connected by a spring and a damper. And I can tell the function which states I want this outputs. And since we're gonna design a state feedback controller uh, to start with, I say that I output all four states. So we have the model here. I pack it uh, into a named state space object where I give the state's name here. Q is the angle of the motor and QM denotes on the motor side. Q dot M is the velocity of that. And QL is uh, the angle of the load side. So you can think of this as a, as a motor that is driving a load and it's, they are connected by a flexible shaft. So that's quite common in transmission systems and in robot arms, for instance. You, uh, usually you can only measure on the motor side, but you're interested in controlling the angle on the load side. And the input is a torque. And we assume for now that all states are measurable. We have the system here depicted in a pole zero map. We have a pole in the uh, origin, an integrator, and then we have two resonant poles here which correspond to the flexibility in the transmission. Uh, we can look at the impulse response for this system. Uh, just saying plot and I call impulse. 10 seconds and uh, I say I want to use the method zero order hold to sample the system to simulate the impulse response. If I want to simulate it in continuous time, I can do that. I have to load the control systems package. I just loaded control systems base right now. So we see that um, if we hit the system with a hammer through the input, then the angles QM, uh, Q motor and Q load, they will stabilize at some value, uh, non-zero value. And the velocities will swing a bit back and forth because the system is oscillatory and then uh, the oscillation will die down. All right, so here we see a bunch of errors and that's because I haven't defined anything here. So, and when we do pole placement, we specify where we want to place the closed loop poles. And if we look at this pole zero map here, we see that these poles are at roughly a negative 1.5 real value <clears throat> with uh, quite poor damping. We see that they are, uh, the imaginary axis here is, is much larger. So maybe I would like to place those poles at, I would like to keep roughly the same bandwidth of those poles. And maybe I would like to keep this pole here also and, and move this pole over here also. So let's say I want to have two poles at negative 10 and uh, two poles at negative one. So I would do that by uh, specifying that here. Uh, the order here, of course, uh, doesn't matter. So now I have a vector of desired pole locations. And then I compute my state feedback gain L uh, by calling uh, the place function. And I can pass the uh, system first and then the desired poles. Oi, I misspelled place. And that gives me a state feedback gain matrix. Then I uh, can create a controller out of that. So I say state space of that uh, gain matrix. And I compute the uh, closed loop system from a disturbance appearing at the input to the output. And I call it uh, GCL for closed loop. Uh, I can compute the poles of my closed loop system. And indeed we have two poles in negative 10 and two poles in negative one. We see the imaginary part here is very small. So if I simulate that uh, step response and uh, we see that uh, the angles QM and QL, uh, they go to some non-zero value still. And remember this is a load disturbance step response. So we would ideally want this to go down to zero eventually, but it doesn't. 
And the reason here is, of course, that the controller doesn't have any integral action. It's just a state feedback controller. So there are two problems uh, with this controller right now. The first problem is that we assume that we can measure all the states. And in a motor control setup, uh, we can usually only measure the position on the motor side. Uh, some systems indeed have the property of uh, have a sensor on the load side also. Uh, but we can usually not measure the velocities. So in some motor control systems, uh, internally there is a very high frequency sampling and then you can uh, derive the velocity through differentiation and then subsample that with filtering. And then we can pretend that we can measure the velocity, uh, but usually we, we cannot. So how could we uh, solve the problems with this controller? And in particular, how could we add, add integral action so that we get rid of this uh, stationary error here? Uh, one method of adding integral action is to augment the system with a disturbance model. Uh, so here I say I call a function add low frequency disturbance. We can see what that does. Uh, this says that we add a model of a disturbance, a step disturbance that acts on the uh, second state in this case and that corresponds to the um, velocity on the arm side. That's indeed where if we look at uh, p dot b uh, the in control input uh, affects the second state. So we say that our disturbance entered there. And that gives us a new system back, which looks similar to the original system, but we have this extra state here corresponding to the last row. Uh, so that adds an integrator to, to the system. Uh, and then we might be interested in designing a observer for that. So here I am I indexed the system at the index QM. So this picks out, we see that P has uh, four measurements. Uh, this is the C matrix. But if I, uh, sorry, if I access P with the, with the name of the measurement I'm interested in, then I get the system which has uh, only uh, QM as an output. So now I remove the unreasonable assumption that we can measure all the states. So now we have a system with a single output only. Then I need to specify desired poles also for the observer. And uh, maybe I place the observer poles. Let's see, I have cheated here before. Maybe I usually we want to place the observer poles uh, to be faster than the closed loop system poles. So we had uh, two poles in negative 10. So let's place them in negative 20. And then we had two poles in negative one. So let's place them in negative two. And then we need to place the integral pole for the disturbance also somewhere. Maybe there we place that in negative two also. And then uh, we call place one more time on the augmented system. Uh, with the new desired poles and this time I pass uh, the symbol O here uh, and this indicates that I want to compute observer gain rather than controller gain. So we can see how that looks. Uh, that gives me a, uh, let's see, let's rename that to desired poles 2 or desired poles O maybe for observer. That gives me a uh, observer gain. Uh, then I can compute a controller using the function observer controller. I pass the augmented system. I pass my state feedback gain. And in this uh, case, I need to add uh, one to the state feedback gain. And that corresponds to the disturbance state uh, that I have estimated with my dis uh, disturbance observer. And then my observer gain here. And that gives me a controller. Oh, sorry controller and now we see the controller has five states so we have four states for the system and one state for the disturbance which it internally estimates then I can form the uh, closed loop system uh, the same way as I did before almost the difference here is that um, when I call feedback I tell feedback which are my measurable outputs that are passed into the controller 
So if we remember the original system P has uh, four outputs, but the controller here only takes a single input. And the advanced version of feedback allows you to specify exactly which signals uh, go where. And here I say that Y1, the outputs of the P that are available to the controller is only QM. And all the other outputs are just for plotting purposes. And we can see uh, what poles that gives me. And uh, that gives me two poles in negative 20, like I said. We have two poles in negative 10, that's corresponding to the system. Um, we have the poles in negative 2 that are required here. And then we have the two poles in negative 1. So in total we have nine poles here. Five in the controller and five in the, uh, sorry, and four in the plant. And the last step I uh, would like to do is to um, simulate this. I can do that uh, using the step function again. And this time we see that uh, maybe I can try to increase the resolution. All right. This time we see that uh, the controller is able to reject the disturbance here also for the angular states. If we compare that to the previous simulation. So this was my original simulation where I had a stationary error in the angular states. And this is my new simulation where the controller rejects the disturbance. And we can experiment a bit here with maybe the desired pole location. Say that I do the desired poles uh, twice as fast for the observer. And we see that now uh, the controller is much, much faster at rejecting the disturbance. The peak value of the uh, disturbance in this case uh, is ab uh, just above 0 0.5. And uh, before the response reached over, uh, well over 10 here. So the, the speed of the observer poles has a quite dramatic effect on the closed loop response. And uh, it's generally the case that pole placement design is, you can have some feeling for where you want to place the poles, um, but it's quite hard to know where you would like to place the poles to get a robust uh, closed loop system. And that's uh, in general a drawback with a pole placement design procedure. There are some rules of thumb, uh, but in general it's quite difficult. And before we are happy with this uh, control, we should probably uh, plot things like the gang of four plot for the system P with output QM and the controller. And we see that in this case, we have a huge peak in the sensitivity function. And we also have a huge peak in the complementary sensitivity function. So this system has a severe robustness uh, difficulties and we should probably not uh, make use of this tuning as is, even if the simulation here looked quite reasonable. So this just highlights that pole placement uh, is simple to employ, but it's quite difficult to have a feeling for the robustness properties of the closed loop system and that's uh, that's in general a drawback of the uh, design methodology. So in this case I actually think I know what the problem with the robustness is and if we look at this pole zero map here we see that these resonant poles are actually significantly faster than 10. If we print the damp report of P, unfortunately it's a bit poorly formatted here in uh, Pluto, we see that the resonant poles uh, ha have a frequency of uh, 14 radians per second, which is well above 10. And as a general rule of thumb, you shouldn't try to make a poorly damped mode uh, modes, uh, slower uh, using pole placement. So that will lead to a, a closed loop system with poor robustness. So if we uh, try to instead make the poles uh, slightly faster, we change them from negative 10 to negative 15. Uh, and we have a look at the gang of four plot here. We see that now when I press save, uh, this um, peak will probably vanish. And indeed uh, it did. So now we have a system with much better uh, robustness properties than we had before. 
so instead of uh, making use of pole placement, we might use something called LQR design. And that's something we will have a look at in the next uh, lecture. Uh, but for now, if you would like to learn more about uh, uh, the place function, uh, you can go to the documentation, look at synthesis, and here we have the place function. Uh, we also have a design example in robust and optimal control documentation under the control design for a pendulum on a cart. Here is a pole placement design and observer design as well. So if you would like to go into a bit more uh, detail here. Uh, okay, thank you for today.